Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast. Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang sandiga ng sampayanan mula sa walang labis at walang ulang na pagbabalita, paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na henerasyon. online, sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Ating tunghayan, pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online. Buhay online, sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Alamin ang pinakalates trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang sa anak ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito. At ngayon, narito na ang ating host, ang ating Teki Mami, si J. C. Bautista. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hey, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Friday na naman po. Napakabilis. The week just breezes right through. Every day, ang bilis-bilis ng panahon. Ano ba yung, ano ba yung face ko dyan? Sa ano, sa desktop ko ng freeze. Anyway, happy Friday everyone. I trust that everyone had a good and productive week. Uh, I, I, I know I did. I, I have been having a good and productive week. And very busy po, as always. Pero siyempre po, bi- being busy is good. Kasi yun ako ako. Pero ako ako paniniwala o sa buhay ko. I'd rather be busy than bored. Yes, yes, yes. Pero of course, We also have to think that kailangan po ang updates po. Malaking importansya ang dapat ibigay sa ating health, sa ating kalusugan because yep, yep, yep. Trabaho ng trabaho, of course, you know, but we have to take care of our health, especially in this these trying times of the pandemic and madaming mga health concerns mga tao. Dapat po natin Yes, we have to think about our health and how we can, uh, you know, fortify ourselves with uh, vitamins, enough tulog, and all that. Lahat po yan kasi kulang sa akin. It looked like today I only slept two hours. I, 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 for some reason, I couldn't sleep last night. Yan nga talaga, my mind is always like uh, 24-7 cranking in my brain, but I offer them to me to me to me to me to me to me I really don't like to take um, medicine or drugs, as they call it, to me to me I take tea, chamomile, to help, or a hot cocoa, but anyway, so health is always number one that's our concern nowadays. So of course, we practical practicality dictates what we gotta work, but you know, hinahinay na, you know, we have to um, make it a point and find time to, to um, pause and take a respite, magpahinga, kailangan, and then grind to live, right? So Friday it is, and like for some of us who have been working from home for more than two years now, You know, sometimes that there's no difference between a weekday and a weekend. Like, yan po pinapag-usap na rin the whole week. The series of uh, uh, talks about and working from home, uh, work ethics and the workplace na ang ating bagong workplace ngayon na pinatawag ay ang ating mga bahay. And of course, on to the hybrid working uh, work uh, procedure na marami ngayon sa mga companies ang nag-hybrid work na because parang nag-die down na yung yung uh, 
pandemic for us. A lot of people, and actually, I think it's more being resilient there. And it's, it's more of adapting to the new normal, which is like a um, combination of working from home and working in the office. Pinag-usapan po natin through the week, yung good and bad work ethics, uh, how, how to make your workplace uh, adapt to the new normal. Saka pinag-usapan din natin through yung what, what is how we're working. Um, today, we will, we're going to finish that series with uh, uh, few more things to talk about that kind of uh, topic. No? Uh, but before anything else, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, news muna, current news here in the Philippines. Okay, what's happening? Well, uh, may nag-text po kasi dito, dapat technology nga naman, dapat mabilis na yung pag-issue ng mga cards, pag-issue ng mga visa, pag-apply ng passport, but for some reason, may delay because of the pandemic, di ba yung mga office, hindi pa 100% operational, uh, you know, pero kasi may mga satellite offices na ngayon to apply for you know, certain things, right? And um, um, isa na po na sa in-apply na matagal ko na rin po na antay is yung national Bakit ang tagasunal? Well, uh, yesterday po, in the news, Senator Grace Paul said uh, she's urging the hastening or yung pagpapag-release of issue ng Phyllis's cards, okay? Uh, anyway, yeah, ito yun, no? Uh, yung pag-issue ng national ID, natatagalan kasi. Senator Grace Paul and uh, Mahapod said the government must address the delays in the printing and delivery of the National Philippine Identification System cards. Tapos pa, meron po yan online na pwede mo i-check. Just me, pag pinapasok ko yung, yung numbers ng resibo ko, hindi naman nababasa, hindi nahahanap. So, ano, paano ka-efficient yun, no? I, I couldn't track my application, my binayarang ID. The long wait of six months to over a year to get the ID is unjustified. Co-chair of the Senate Public Services Committee said in a statement, with more than half of the population registered, the Filipinos have given the program a chance. It's high time that the government does its share by delivering the national ID to our citizens without further delay. Uh, it's not going to Senator Grace Poe, who was re-elected in 2019 and will remain in the Senate until 2025. The senator also urged the Philippine Statistics Authority, or the PSA, to ensure the accuracy of the data in the national ID and open avenues for modifications if needed. She pointed out that the national ID could have been used to fast-track the distribution of cash aid, fuel vouchers, health benefits, and other basic services for Filipinos during the pandemic. The streamlined information in one card have made public and private transactions less conversant and trying. In December 2021, the PSA said 50.1 uh, million Filipinos have signed up for their fill seat cards. Okay? But as of March, the PSA said they had delivered only 8.1 million cards. number ang deliver ni Walaman. Ayan. 20%. Uh, a controversial program okay, that was in the legislative bill for several years. The national ID system was finally approved by Congress under Republic Act number 11055 or Philippine Identification System. Okay? And was signed into a law no August 2008. Hello, good morning. Welcome po sa ating mga kaibigan watching today and uh, Who's joining me this morning for Why Online? Welcome, welcome. The filthy card was meant to be a valid proof of identity that should be that shall be a means of simplifying public and private transactions, enrollment in schools, and the opening of factories. Talaga, na discuss sa bangko na lo ka talaga ako. Ang dami dami ko account sa video taklo taklo. I have a, a savings account, a checking account, and I have even a dollar account. So when I moved to Pampanga po, uh, Uh, hindi kagaya sa Amerika po kasi pagka yung banko nyo, 
Kung yan ay Wells Fargo, kahit saan yun, pwede yung owner, pwede ka mag-withdraw, magkanta, walang charge. Eh, dito pa sa Pilipinas, lumayo ka lang ng konti, may charge. Uh, you know, may charge na kaagad lahat. Tapos mag-withdraw ako na sa nili kong money, may charge ako ng tonid peso. So, I decided to open an account here in Pampanga, locally, para huwag na ako i-charge ng 200 pesos pang kung bili na yun ang load ng itong si Hendrix, no? My God. So, then, when I was uh, applying, uh, nag-withdraw ako, transaction, tapos another transaction pa to open an account. Hindi pa ako yung eh, tinulungan doon sa kung saan ako nakaupo. Iba na naman daw yun. Sa ibang pangalan type. And then, when I got there, you know, I was opening uh, a simple uh, other savings account or, or passbook account. Biglang sabi, uh, what do I do? What's my work? Kailangan pa daw ng letter of employment and stuff like that. What the heck, you know? Ang dami ko ng mga account sa BDO, napal pa ako ng mga papel. So, it was just too cumbersome to just to, to open an account na ito na connected. So, I just turned my back and walk away na it's not okay. Napaka no, inefficient na ng tatagal. So, yeah, but sa America, kasi imagine, in, in the States, customer service is very important. And, kunyari, marami na nakita na pila. Kahit yung manager ng banko, tatawagin yung nakapila. O yung open niya yung kanya window para mag-transact kung ano man yung transaction na yan. Ate, miss ko. Wala, kahit na computerized na mabagal pa rin. Anyway, so, yun pa. So, itong pag-issue ng PILSIS, dapat ibilis-bilisan na, right? A controversial program, ito kasi for several, for several years na itong uh, pinush. It's meant to, to, valid, to be a valid proof of identity para wag nang yan hanap-hanapan pa ng kung ano ba? It will also boost efficiency, especially in dealing with government services where people will only need to present their filter card in transaction. Okay? Uh, so, yun po. Yun ang ano po dyan. Uh, tungkol sa national ID. Okay? Uh, okay. So, uh, and the Philippines pa rin po, regarding naman po na sa ito, I think this is important. Okay? The Philippines said yesterday it has terminated talks with China. Okay? It's on for a joint energy project in the South China Sea after President Rodrigo Duterte ordered an end to the negotiations. You know why? Ito ating outgoing presidente, abang siya on the list. Manila signed an agreement with Beijing in 2018 to cooperate on oil and gas development as a way to benefit from resources and a waterway while setting aside the territorial dispute. Duterte has taken a softer approach to Beijing's claim over most of the sea allowed Philippine companies to resume drilling off the, the country in October 2020, okay? It was hoped that this decision to lift the 2014 moratorium would fast track the talks with Beijing. I tried for three years to come to an agreement to facilitate exploration for and exploitation of oil and gas in the West Philippine Sea. Philippine uh, Foreign Minister Theodore Loxin said in a statement, we got as far as it is constitutionally possible to go. Loxane said Duterte ordered the discussions to be terminated completely without specifying when that happened. Oh, tinapos na lang niya. Dati kasi, di ba? Dami-dami yung binibigay na yun saan? Now, we call it convention or allowance in. Uh, three years on, we had not achieved our objective of developing oil and gas resources so critical for development but not at the price of sovereignty, not even a particle of it. Sabi to ni Loxin, Manila has been locked in a dispute over areas of the South China Sea, almost all of which China insists it has exclusive rights to rejecting a 2016 Hague ruling that it's, uh, that it's historical, uh, excuse me, Claims were without basis. The Chinese embassy in Manila did not respond to the request for comment. Lockstein's statement. Lockstein's statement. Confirmed that two sides had reached a deadlock. So, nag deadlock na pala. 
nagbibigay ng pagkain ng bala. Kaso na, di ba? Hindi ina-acknowledge nung nung China yung sinabi ng UN eh na nasa atin na wild yung area na yun. Pati ka sa ulo talaga, right? What's happening? Okay? So, um, so the two sides had reached a deadlock that Jay Batumba, a director of the University, University of the Philippines Institute for Maritime Affairs and Law of the Sea. Ano ka lang dami? Anyway, we do have constitutional restrictions of development of offshore petroleum resources. The most important one is that any development of petroleum resources should be under the complete supervision and control of the state because it is our resources. And pong sinabi ni Batong Bakal. Okay? Hold on, please. Sorry. Just what happened to my program? Sorry. Am I am I online? Can I just check myself, please? Because it looks like it's handing. I am still alive. Anyway, so um, that's what's happening. Well, since the uh, talks on the China Sea, na nagkaganda na okay. Equity sharing should also favor the Philippines. Sabi ni uh, ni Jay Batong Bakal. Tensions between Manila and Beijing over the wall have intensified in the final year of the third term in office. Yung napo kasi una pa lang feeling natin kapin kape kamping kampi si presidente Duterte sa mga sa China. Eh. Last month, Manila said it summoned a senior official of the Chinese embassy on April 13 uh, to protest the har harassment of a Taiwan marine research vessel with Filipino scientists on board a Chinese Coast Guard ship. So, mga yun, alalak yung balita yun, di ba? Inaharas niya na yung Taiwanese fisherman and kasama dun mga Filipino researchers. Okay? Ano nangyari sa phone ko mga Anyway, so that's ano, that's our bit of uh, information regarding what's happening in dito sa Philippines. Okay? Uh, so we continue on to uh, let's continue on uh, with our issue on um, sorry, with our issue on uh, ethics in this pandemic. Okay? Uh, next week we will also still talking we will be talking about uh, issues in gender equality na pinap it's a workplace and chakat sa, sa lifestyle. Next week na po natin yung pag-usapan. I keep putting it off kasi po inaantay ko po yung aking mga resource people na, na panelist na maganda pong usapan kasi po yan eh. Right? So, um, on a happy note naman, I, I'd like to, to talk about this. Let me just, okay? Ayan. On a happy note. Okay, let me talk about in this uh, pandemic situation. Hold on. Oops, sorry. happening. There you go. Ayan, thank you. All right, so let's talk about this uh, this good story about surviving and pending through working or business in this pandemic, right? Just like any other employee, okay, uh, eight or five na jobs, uh, si Jessica a mother of four, wondered how she can earn more money without spreading herself too thin. And po siya, I'm just uh, 
Yan. Hindi po siya si Sophia ano yung artista ng masakit. Ito nasa left most. Okay. Ayan siya. Right? Ayan, ayan, ayan siya. Yun, yung nakasuit. Okay? Itong story niya. Let me just tell you about it. Uh, a mother of four, you know, uh, an employee of, of an eight to five job, okay? Um, she wondered how she can earn more money without spreading herself too thin, all right? Fired of the corporate grind as a hotel sales employee, okay? Palma was curious to know how some online beauty sellers on Facebook and Instagram were doing well financially. Kasi po, di ba? Itong pandemic, nag-proliferate din po yung mga reseller, e-commerce, okay, online buying, online selling. Pwede kang maging uh, pati, pati yung food po, di ba? Uh, selling your uh, baked goodies or cooked uh, or food. Yan po nag-proliferate sa pandemic. So, na, 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 napagod na itong sa corporate grind as hotel sales employee. She was curious to know how some online beauty sellers on Facebook and Instagram were doing well financially. So, she followed her gut feeling and straight away contacted a couple, excuse me, a couple of online sellers from Laguna and asked them if she could buy soaps and lotions from them and repackage the items. Ito, nauso po yung repacking, eh, di ba? Ul ulit, repacking business naman na eh, nandiyan na before, pero more than ever, ngayon, nangyari yun, mas maraming, marami ang naggawa niyan because of the pandemic, right? Thinking of other ways to make money and of course, because uh, some people were lost their jobs temporarily or nakat uh, yung time nila in half it's well though because of the pandemic. So, naghanap ng mga tao ng ibang pagkakit. Including tong si um, uh, Aika, uh, Jessica Aika Pag. So, she followed their gut and contacted some online sellers in Laguna and asked them if she could buy soaps and lotions from them and repackage them and resell them online. She photographed the beauty items herself, printed out stickers for packaging, and sold the products on Instagram with the tagline, Beauty is Limitless. Okay. right? In just two months, the, the humble beauty company she started called Super Beauty, Super Bio, Super Bo, Super Beauty, recorded 100% profits from her 18,000 seed capital. Wow, 18,000 now. That's when this beauty entrepreneur knew she was doing something right. Nakita ko nga yung ano niya. Ito bang kanya product? Oh, oh yeah. Sige, let me just show it to you, okay? Para may idea kayo kung ano yung binenta niya at nagkaganyan siya. Ah, uh, naging mabuti. Um, patakbo. Alright, hold on. Bear with me, please. Oops. Sorry. Ito, oh. Ganto yung mga produkto niya. One second. Okay. All right. Whoops. I'll just put it up. Sorry, I'm going to see. I'm just going to put it up Oops. for you to see uh, side by side her picture. Okay. Bear with me. My wind blown here because naka air na ako, naka electric pan ka. So, mag in kasi po ay. Anyway, so, there you go. Ayan. Ayan po. Okay. Yan ang kanyang mga produkto. There you go. There it is. Ayan siya. Okay, tapad dito sa panin. So, these are her beauty products. na sumikat sa market, right? Ayan. Talking about this uh, successful mompreneur. Alright. So, in just two months, the humble beauty company she started called Super Beaut reported 100% profits from an 18,000 peso seed capital. Okay? Phil, uh, uh, ang philstar.com po, in interview po si uh, talk to the Super Beaut founder to learn more what pieces of advice she will share with aspiring entrepreneurs out there. 
So ito po yung mga pieces of advice ni ICAP, uh, ni Ms. ICAP Palma. Okay. Mother of four, mompreneur, successful one, super beauty. At ang ibig niya, ito ang in-impart niya sa atin. Okay. Hello there, Mr. Joey Ortiz. Hello. Number one, try and try and try to succeed. It's a cliche, but it works, right? Talaga naman po. Ganun din po ako. If at first you don't succeed, you know, sabi na, try, try again. Because, you know, you learn from your mistakes, you learn from your pitfalls, you get back up and do it again. Yun po kasi mga ibang nagsasabi na, ah, hindi nag-work yan, or ayaw mag-venture into business. There's always a risk, risk sa pagnanegosyo. Pero kasi, yung mga ibang pinilig na negosyo, pero nagsasabi lang, nagpipintas lang, hindi naman nila tinaply. Wala silang karapatan magsabi about something that they don't know about. Because talaga naman eh, there, no guts, no glory, no sang talaga eh. As cliche as it sounds, this mantra truly really helped Aika to push her brand to higher height. Try and try until we succeed, right? If at first you don't succeed, try and try again, okay? When she was just starting out, she knew her brand would be compared among the big leagues uh, in the huge market of beauty, but she pushed through despite her dose. The competition was a major challenge for us back in 2013. There was a lot of heavily invested brands that were really loud with their marketing and PR efforts. I thought, how would a small brand like us be known? Every time there's a failure, even if people were discouraging me, I just went on and did better every time. My advice is do not be afraid to fail and fall until you know what works. Try and try until you're able to stand out. Always trust yourself in your gut. Pareho kami ng ano, paniniwala, nakasabi ko lang kanina, no guts, no glory. Ganyan naman talaga. Kagaya ko rin po, uh, matagal na rin po akong entrepreneur, aside from of course being a media practitioner, uh, a journalist by profession, a copywriter, uh, an online uh, yes. trainer, tutor, is yung aking pong uh, matagal ng project na pinwino work on na uh, hindi po na muna po i-divulge na hoping against hope and of course with faith, hope, and love for God na it will push through finally. Years in the making po ito yung aking din po try and try until hopefully we will succeed with my partner uh, na sila Fatima and Trina. Uh, hopefully this is the year it will come into fruition. But, you know, we keep trying before the pandemic to set us up. Uh, saka ko nalang mabalita po, pag andyan na. Pero yun po, I've been working and working on this project for years. And uh, following the leading of the Lord, kung saan pupunta po itong pinag-work up on a project. But it, kasi it also involves helping other people with their work, giving jobs to ating mga kabubayan. Anyway, ibang story na yun. Anyway, so sabi nga ni Ms. Aika Palma, try and try and really succeed. Ano pa? Advice niya, number two, focus on your goals, right? Aika shared that the real key to success is to focus on the milestone map that you have set for your brand. She shared that she focused on the vision of her company to offer simple and multi-use beauty products that can help Filipinas enhance their natural beauty with skincare and makeup offerings. In 2016, Aika decided to transition her brand from being just a skincare line to also becoming a cosmetic line. She tapped the Familia star Sophia Andres to be her first ever celebrity endorser. I really like how she was a great actress on the series Forevermore and how she marketed herself on Instagram and how the followers really adored her and how, that, how she did her makeup. So I sent her a message on Instagram and asked her to be the face of our cosmetic line made up of lip tint, blush products, concealers, and foundation items at the, at the time. It really worked as our brand became more known. Recently, uh, Palma reintroduced Sophia as her celebrity endorser as Super Beaut launched this new plush tint line, a collection of soft matte lip tints in five shades perfect for Morena, its lip and cheek rolly, a series of water tint for cheeks and lips, and its new skincare line made of facial serums and beauty parts. The reintroduction of Sophia also marked Super Beauty's rebranding from youthful, bright, colorful packaging that spoke to the young ones to a chic, minimalist look targeting young professionals who grew up with the brand. Okay, 
Number three na tips ni itong si Ms. Palma, be yourself. Okay? Believe it or not, being yourself can help you grow your business. Some people will buy from you not just because of your beautiful product, but because of the person behind the business that they can relate to. Because of you as an entrepreneur and how you inspire them. I believe in this talaga. Kasi sa negosyo rin ako, ano, kagaya ng negosyo rin ako sa Amerika, siya kalita sa Philippines na mga internet cafe and cafes. Talaga naman, the people were going there because of me, right? Siyempre, yung aking cafe, yung mga, yung aking customer base is because they also like the personality of the owner. Siya, it's very important yung PR nyo. No? Palma said that she's always remained true to her core values when it comes to business, which is guided by her mission to help other women empower themselves through entrepreneurship. Even before we had one distributor who started physical stores of Super Butte and other two we sold Super Butte online. We started as a reselling company, so now we want to inspire other women uh, to start their own businesses more with us. In a couple of months, we will launch our distributors package range from a slow of 2,000 to 100,000. But then start your own business with us and resell super good. Now that we've learned to live with these new changes, we've discovered new interests, new talents, and new mindset. The pong tinabi ng 30-something mompreneur. My cup of Filipinas, we've had a breakthrough. Now we're ready to be the best version of ourselves. We will bloom. Tama yan. Okay, hey, I'm an empowerment. I'm all for that. But anyway, good. Good job. Okay, good job, Rekha. And, uh, naman silbing ano yan, inspiration, so baka may pang mga, ma, hindi lang mamipreneurs, but anybody, entrepreneur, okay? Na mag-venture into that, uh, because, na makatulong sa ating mga, yeah. very good. All right? So now, back to more work ethic, more uh, work work, Work and livelihoods, okay. Um, now we go and let's talk about. Well, when we talk about uh, this whole week, we talked about re re hybrid working, right? Yung, uh, yung mga there are already some offices here and abroad who started to do hybrid working, right? But, okay, there are some that are still reluctant or hesitant about uh, doing a hybrid work uh, um, operational procedure. So I think it's time to rethink the office. No? If you are a business owner or, or uh, like a casino, you should rethink rethink this, no, and carefully plan. Okay, we have to accept the fact that hybrid working is here to stay. All right. Uh, Accenture, they conducted a study. Accenture is a call center. Uh, they uh, Accenture uh, put up a future of work study fund, work work study, and they found out that eighty three percent of workers would prefer a hybrid model. That's a high percentage. That's a, like, you know, almost 90% of the hybrid market. And this same survey found that over two-thirds of high-growth businesses have switched to a work-from-anywhere model. Yun nga eh, hindi lang home. Mobile working. Kasi diba, as long as merong internet, may data ka, pwede ka magtrabaho. Totoo naman yun eh. That's a long fact. That's what technology does for us, right? Or is doing for us. Okay? Uh, sabi nga nila, okay, this, this same survey or same study, ginawa na Accenture, they found out that two-thirds of the high-growth businesses have switched to a work-from-anywhere model while the majority of low-growth companies are still focused on where people are going to typically work. However, while companies may be planning on long-term hybrid working, many are still behaving as though Hybrid is just a flash in the pan or temporary. Research by PwC found that just 13% of executives felt ready to give up the office altogether. Executives to, huh? Part of this is logistical. Companies tied into long-term leases, yun nga po, yung mga nag-rent na mga office spaces, uh, may have trouble backing out of them. 
but part of it psychological. We may have been calling it the new normal for over a year, but many of us are still struggling to adjust. Totoo yan. Marami pa pong ginakapag-adjust. Saka yung, yung iba naman po, di ba? Uh, kasi nga, I, I teach uh, uh, international students all the time, corporate students pa yung iba, na yung mga iba po nag-downside, nag-downsize ng opisina. Yun na nga, it's a good thing if they can get out of their leases. But but I, I know for a fact, like in the Philippines, you know, like uh, you know, for the past few years, noong unang-unang year ng pandemic, yung mga lease uh, sa mga mall, sa mga offices, they had to be given a leeway ng gobyerno para nag-update na tulungan nyo naman. Huwag nyo nang, kasi nagbayad na sila, kunyari for the whole year, huwag nyo na siling nila ng rent uh, certain, to a certain time kasi nga pandemia. And iba naman, we're allowed to, well, I'm so sure marami hindi, hindi pa payag na huwag i-honor yung list nila kasi nga, ano yun eh, bayad na tsaka income. Pero mga iba na adjust so, some offices, some special international companies that are abroad with headquarters, they downsize their offices. Kasi nga, maliit na yung mga rentals nila. So, naging cost-efficient para sa kanila. Kasi yung mga rabahador nila were working 30 or 40% working from home. But at the same time, like I was saying, and I said yesterday, dapat binigyan din nila ng extra provision yung mga empleyado. Like, I know that for a fact in call centers, they gave no laptops para sa bahay and they gave an allowance kahit na lang 1,000 extra sa sweldo to pay for the internet to help the pay costs because electricity nila yung ginagamit sa mga 8 hours na araw. Diba? At, at yung lalo na pag nag-airport pa. Siyempre, kanya-kanya na yun. So, so, some have not adjusted still. So, it's time to cut some dead weight. Hybrid working models call for a new approach to asset management. Real estate costs and related expenses are usually the second or third largest outlay for companies. Okay? After their payroll, yun ang sunod ay real estate costs. Yung renta nila, hindi man sa kanila yung pinatatayo ng office nila. Companies that hope to remain competitive will need to start shedding their unnecessary office spaces as soon as possible or risk being left behind by first o yung mga unang umakapuan it. Ang the actors na movie ha, yung mga ibig sabihin ng first actors ay the first ones to act. Okay? One company reacting quickly to the savings opportunity is investment banking giant J.P. Morgan Chase. Okay? CEO Jamie Dimon told shareholders back in 2020 that remote work will change how we manage our real estate. We will quickly move to a more open seating arrangement in which digital tools will help manage seating arrangements as well as needed amenities such as conference room space. As a result, for, for every 100 employees, we may need seats for only 60 on average because see social distancing, okay? This will significantly reduce our need for real estate. Social distancing, check out, work from home. Okay. In other words, rethinking its approach to asset management using digital tools could save the bank up to 40% of its real estate costs. Totoo naman eh, yan ang isang ano dyan eh, na nakita ng maraming mga companies and corporations how much it has saved them having a part of their employee pool work from home. Sabi nga nung survey pool last year or year, uh, year and a half ago na sa Amerika, it saved 23, bawat paliyado na nagtrabaho from home, it saved the company at least twenty thousand um, dollars a year for the sweldo or the gastos ng empleyado. So, bakit hindi ka mga hybrid, de ba? Flexible work calls for flexible office space. Okay. Small wonder then that the global co-working space is booming. Okay. Co-working na like share. The asset light approach to office space is predicted to grow to thirteen point zero three billion by twenty twenty five with a CAGR of 12%. And companies are no longer restricted to simply reducing rental costs by leasing smaller offices. Okay? Palitin yung mga nire-renta. Office hoteling, also known as hot desking, allows companies to rent office spaces they need on any given day along with the corresponding facilities. Yun na nga, nagre-renta ng space kunyari, kailangan ng, ng conference kung wala na silang conference room. Okay? So, 
it, it say your company has a monthly all hands meeting, but otherwise works remotely. Okay, the work from home kaya pero kailangan yun ng conference meeting. You no longer have to splash out for space that fits everyone, but sits empty for most of the month. So ang gagawin mo magrent kaya ng space just for the that that day or the event or that month or that month thing. Asset management in the sharing economy is going to take some significant digital power. Okay? Luckily, a thriving startup scene has come up. Okay? Ready to help companies meet the challenge. It's among corporate real estate disruptors offer companies apps to manage their global work. Apps po, ah. Book meeting rooms and give you all the data you need to optimize your space of, uh, your, your use of space over time. Ayan talaga. Ayan ang pagkaling ng technology, right? Facility, right? Convenience, okay? Um, more bang for your buck, okay? It makes sense. The real estate tech, sec tech sector is booming with uh, technology sector. With VC funding, well, with venture, VC boys, venture capitalists, funding up to 28% in 2021, so an impressive $32 billion in venture capitalism, okay? Companies that are saving on their corporate real estate, footprint can invest savings in their digital workspaces or in making their offices more appealing for hybrid workers, okay? Tumutuling yan mag sa mga opisina. Many startups like, again, X, sa America po ito, are making buildings more sustainable. Yun pa, ginagawang eco-friendly ang mga opisina. Many startups like, again, X, are making buildings na more sustainable with a, a SAS asset management platform that features proprietary uh, proprietary um, AI software to monitor building and predict maintenance needs in advance. So, yan na mga gamit ng AI. Technology na talaga at it's fine itong labanan dito. And there's more good news for companies ready to think more creatively about their use of office space. Prop tech innovators like Liquid Space, okay, make it easy for hybrid businesses to share their office space with other companies. Kaya ano na nga, puso na rin nga so, yung, yung mga co-sharing or co-branding, hindi lang sa opisina, pati sa mga negosyo, di ba? Nakikita nyo po ngayon yung mga food kiosks, nag-share sila or yung business, iba-iba. Kunyari, dito merong, uh, let's say, paggawa ng sushi, yung kalahati ng kiosk, kalahati naman nagtitinda ng barbecue or something. Basta co-branding po yan talaga para uh, mag-share ng rent, so, di ba? Mas mali ibayad sa rent. Uh, nangyari rin yan po yung mga co-branding na uso. Ganyan din sa office spaces, di ba? Pwede kayong mag-share ng office space with other companies or other businesses. Basta walang conflict of interest. Yun po yung importante ron. The community solution for the hybrid working environment. Okay, hybrid work isn't just about improving your asset management. Okay, once you've overhauled your office, pag naayos yun na abisina nyo, you still need to think about getting your employees there, yung transportation nila, the ba papunta doon, or, or yung, kung yung train, safe pa, eh, may virus pa. Just a new digital tool, uh, just as new digital tools are empowering companies to cut real estate costs and eliminate, eliminate wasted space, new transport tech plat platforms are hitting the market. May mga bago pong uh, transport tech platforms. Uh, with flexible on-demand employee transportation solutions. Of course, and na rin po yung uh, mga Grab, Uber, pero mahal po yan, di lahat ng empleyado na ka-support yan. For instance, meron bang forward-thinking hybrid businesses should be taking advantage of demand-responsive transport technology. The transport sector's answer to hot desking, BRT apps po ito, tawag, allow employees to book their seats in advance and allow companies to plan how many shuttles they need on a given day. Or you know, cutting down on empty buses is, is, isn't just better for the planet. So, America po maganda to, pero wala tayong diagnosis. But it, and it can also make commuter shuttles far more cost-effective. Alim naman yun, nakakapag-book nakakapag ka ng bus ano, in advance. DRT also opens up another opportunity for hybrid companies, shared commuter vehicles. Ayan po. Matagal na sa Amerika yan, yung uh, ano yan, uh, carpooling, right? Neighboring businesses can easily split the cost of shuttles and share the seats out among whichever employees are working in the office on a given day. Siya kayong pare-parehong area na katira. 
kaya pulling na naman yan. Pero, pero naalala ko tuloy dyan po na sa COVID yung pamangkin ko last year. Because she carpools to work, uh, working for San Miguel. Eh, ang, ang nanay po naman nun na so, sobra pong praying in their house before you enter. They remove all their shoes, pati yung damit po na so at pang nabas. Pinapaiwan na doon sa labahan. Tapos ini-sprayan po ng todo-todo yung bago pumasok sa bahay nila. Pinukuhan temperature. Tapos meron pa silang spraying thing na para ma-sanitize yung taong papasok. Yun, at hindi lumalabas yung ate ko na yun at saka yung asawa niya from the house. They work from home. Yeah, because their daughter was working, okay? Lalabas na po ngayon, ay nagka-carpool. Yan ang nangyari. But for businesses already adapting to the new hybrid working model, rethinking their approach to employee commuting must be part of the decision, okay? The future of work is already here. It's already happening po, yung hybrid work environment. Now it's time to think about the future of the workplace, di ba? Lanuhin yung paano yung aayusin yung workplace para maging conducive po sa bagong normal na pagtatrabaho, which is heavy working. Okay, alright? So, yun po yung take on that. Um, let me just check na po yung aking broadcast. Kasi kasi nagaha... Wala akong makakita. Nagaham na lang todo. Hello. Hello, we're am I broadcasting? But anyway, um, yeah. So uh next naman to talk about is it uh that when you post the question, is finding a new normal in the workplace impossible? Well, let's see. Ito, ito. Here's the topic. Is finding a new normal in the workplace possible? Anong ibig sabihin natin dito? Okay. Well, it's hard to know exactly what to expect from work. Kung ano ang new normal sa work. Except yan, yun lang. Ngayon, hybrid working. Ang operative word. Ngayon. We're entering the third year of a global pandemic that's brought unprecedented changes to our work schedule, to our work ethics, to our work systems, okay? Despite many employers' hopes, a full-time return to office-based work is looking highly unrealistic. Talaga. Kasi nga, di ba, na nagtawag na ulit para bumalik magtrabaho sa kusina. Yung iba pong mga tao na nasari na working from home at nakakita ng ibang opportunity ay nag-resign at ay sa office. Hindi ko naman sila masisi because, you know, we're still existing. I mean, we're still living in this pandemic situation. Lalo na sa Philippines din, yung traffic situation, saka sa ibang country, yung hours that they need to, to, to spend commuting, maraming factors po. So, uh, so it's, it's unrealistic to think that we will ever go back to normal na as like before muna. Kasi unang-una, yung Omicron variant pushes back return to office plans once again for millions of workers. And given the way the current labor market shifted power to employees, pre-pandemic work structures are likely to become a thing of the past. Yet, for all that seems certain, there are still so much we don't know about how our working environment will really evolve this year and the years to come. Okay? This time last year, many people expected 2021 to bring a degree of stability, perhaps even the smooth rollout of hybrid work. Kaya lang, the emergence of a new variant of the virus block this and may well continue to do so, so in the months ahead. So amid constantly shifting circumstances, it's hard to pin down where we might find ourselves in the next 12 months, uh, next six months, because we're already six months into the to the year, and nga, it looks like hybrid working is going to proliferate. But experts who study employment and the workplace have identified a, new, a few trends that are already giving shape to the way we'll be working in the coming months, power years, and may just be a window onto the future of office life. Okay, 
Unang muna, ano-ano na yung napapansin na natin na nangyayari ngayon? Shorter work weeks may happen, but they could create division, okay? A call for shorter work weeks and condensed hours has been gaining traction around the globe. Ganun din yung pag-aaral, di ba? With companies and entire governments alike already exploring this alternative. Di ba po sa ating government, yung parang, di ba, I think a few months ago, pinagpatupad po yung four-day work week sa gobyerno ba yan? or sa mga government agencies, 12-hour uh, work days, but 4-day work week. Sa akin, okay yun eh, kasi ganun din lumalabas yun. And lalo na ako, I work more than 8 hours a day. I mean, 10 to 12 hours a day that I work, almost 7 days a week, doing so many other, many things all together. It is necessary to shake up the structure when we work, says Abigail Marks, a professor of the future of work at Newcastle University Business School in the UK. The 9 to 5, 40 hour work week that emerged during the Industrial Revolution, the last time work changed so dramatically, is no longer sustainable. Yung sinabi niya, due to the increasing pace of work necess necess necessitated by video conference software and continued online presence. Okay, sabi pa ni Marx, business and policymakers are keen to explore measures that may mitigate the overburdening of employees, whilst hoping to retain this increase in productivity. The solution that is constantly mentioned is the four-day working week. Ayan ang ay sinabi ko. Okay? Sa America, ginawa-gawa na naman yan before. And condensed hours may mean better mental health and work-life balance for many workers. Actually, yung four-day work week, pareho rin yun ang 40 hours a week. Ginawa na lang, ano, di ba? Iginampak na lang sa, sa four days uh, a week. Yung, uh, yung eight, pinagdagan ng four hours, di ba? Na yun yun yung nalist mo doon sa, sa isang araw mo, right? Though it looks like there's hope for the four-day work week to gain stream in 2022, measures like these aren't a silver bullet for all employees, okay? Uh, indeed, okay, sabi nitong si uh, Marx, Miss Marx, she cautions the shift to a shorter work week could only benefit certain workers. The four-day work week may privilege a limited group of white-collar workers, have no benefit to many low-paid and low-skilled workers who will not have the contractual security nor the financial support to work a four-day week, says Marx. Think, for instance, of IT or hourly service workers who might not be able to reduce their hours. Hindi nga. Dapat hindi na reduce hours yung araw lang kagaya na sinabi ko na ginagawa namin sa Amerika noong araw pa, even before this pandemic, even the work from home. Americans have been doing this for years. I remember in 1983 when I first went to, when I was in America, right, and was first working there, yun po, meron kami tinatawag na mental leave. Once a month, you're allowed to ask permission to work from home for your mental, for your mental stability and for your sanity. Meron ganun po ang mga Amerikana eh, because their HR department really makes make great, great effort to take, to check the psychological makeup of their employees also. So we were given a day to take time off from work called the mental leave to be stressed from the house that makes a bow sa bahay. And that was like, what, 15 years ago? Yung kung matagal ng pusing work from home. Tsaka yun nga, yung four-day work week, in-experiment na yun sa states. Yun pa. Alright? So, Marx is among the experts who says it will be a challenge in 2022 to navigate the gulf between those who can take advantage of flexibility versus those who can't. Especially, as calls for increased flexibility and shorter hours only get louder. This year, we could end up with further divisions in society. The highly sought-after employees such as data scientists and those with government support, including high-ranking civil servants, might have reduced hours, and the rest of us still being overburdened by the work. Uh, bespoke perks could become the main attraction, all right? Remember the labor shortages and hiring difficulties of 2021? They will follow us through 2022. Ito si Allison Sullivan, Senior manage, Manager of Corporate Communications at Jobs, sa site ng Glassdoor. Ayan, Glassdoor is a very uh, prominent uh, ano dyan sa online. So kung gusto niya maghanap ng trabaho or gusto niya maka-find out about companies, kung how their work ethics are, 
na makikita niyo dyan mga good and bad reviews about companies at saka mga talking about um, uh, potential employers and employees, okay? So that's because the factors that drove these shortages will still be here. A pandemic, retirees and parents staying home, and growing customer demand businesses must keep up with. This means employees may need to take a different path for hiring workers and keeping them in the seat. We should have learned one key thing in the last two years. Stop looking for a crystal ball. Di ka pwede mag-predict, okay? Anthony Klotzman, Associate Professor of Management at Texas A&M University, USA, who coined the term Great Resignation, says job personalization could be the key to worker satisfaction and retention this year. In 2022, which is now, we will see employees catering more to employees' needs and desires in order to engage their current workers and attract top performers from other firms. Yan nga po, like sinasabi ko, maraming nag-resign na ayaw na nilang bumalik sa full-time pagkatrabaho sa opisina. It's not only good business sense, flexibility and accommodation is becoming a perk workers expect from their employees. Kaya nga, tinitingnan na nilang ngayon magtrabaho para sa isang company na flexible ang kanilang work schedule. Nap napapayagan sila mag-work from home ng ibang araw at ibang araw sa opisina. As a result, companies will roll out more personalized tactics for managing employees. Another important personalization should be prioritizing a worker's individual mental health. Ayan po sinabi ko, okay, mental break, kakasabi ko lang. After all, amid burnout and bore out, more workers are saying enough is enough and quitting their jobs or at least thinking about quitting. Even, uh, uh, yan po nangyayari, on the act of introducing mga sabbaticals or yung mga mental leave. Workers won't be heading back to the same offices. When so, some workers finally de do return to the office, whether it's this year or down the road, many will find the layout and the function to be completely different. Kasi nga, inaayos na ngayon ng mga opisina para maging uh, hindi lang ergonomic but health uh, safety protocols. Bloom, okay, si Nicholas Bloom, a professor of economics at Stanford University sa U.S. says, Mga kompanya pa will reconfigure spaces this year to meet the needs of a newly hybrid workforce and accounting for how people actually want to work when they're together in person collaboratively. Bloom, who has studied the future of the office for years, says the transition back to in-office days has so far been awkward and clumsy. He says he's heard horror stories from workers whose companies have called them back into the office. For instance, sitting in half-empty offices, on the same Zoom calls they would at home and listening to colleagues do the same. Yun na nga, sanay sila nag-zoom, maraming tao, biglang all of a sudden pagpasok sa opisina, empty yung kalahate. Since some companies have rolled out hybrid models bring in certain teams into the office on the same day each team. Bloom says coordination is going to be the name of the game this year and more offices will make permanent layout changes to facilitate this. Okay? Okay, and on that note po, yun po ang nagtatapos yung ating ano about working or workplaces tsaka yan yung hybrid working thank you so much for joining me today maraming maraming salamat and uh, happy friday to everyone at the end of the day three things should remain for our lives wag na wag na wag po tayong mawawalan na faith pananampalataya hope pag-asa and love for each other and everyone else and of course our good lord up above Thank you so much for joining me for this whole week. This has been Jay Bautista for Buhay Online. Para po sa mga nakaka-miss nakaka ng ating mga episodes dito, we have programs po from 7 in the morning to 11 at night here sa broadcast uh, stream, uh, broad streamcast communicators. We are on Facebook. Pag na-miss niyo po yung mga live stream namin sa, sa, um, sa Facebook, pwede po kayong pumunta sa uh, YouTube channel namin, Broad Streamcast Communicators channel. Please like and subscribe so we can share more information and more talks about different topics that uh, will enhance and help us in our lives. Thank you very much. Happy, happy weekend to everyone. Magandang, magandang Friday po sa lahat. At sana po magsama-sama tayo. Magkita kayo tayo po alat ng Monday. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Happy, happy birthday nga pala po. Oh my gosh. Happy birthday to my father up in heaven. June 24 marks the birthday of a lot of people in my life that are important. Yan po ang daddy ko, pinakamamahal. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Rufo Gutierrez. June 24 din po ang birthday niya. Happy birthday to the father of my child, John Villaraza. 
Happy birthday to John Lloyd din po. Birthday. Uh, happy birthday to Ninit Calvento. Uh, my schoolmate. Happy, happy birthday to you all. Okay? Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Inyong natuhayan at napakinggan ang mga makabagong pamamaraan sa mundo ng online sa pamamagitan pa rin ng Broad Streamcast Communicators. Hanggang sa muli.